Hello everybody, Jimmy is Promo here back again with another awesome video and in today's video we will be doing a full tutorial or a full review on the brand new game launcher and its game tools for the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. If you have not subscribed already or if you're brand new here at the channel of Jimmy is Promo, make sure you guys hit on that subscribe button as well as the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos for the Galaxy Note 9. And also don't forget about the playlist tab on the very top where you're able to see every video that has been published so far. In order to use game tools which brings on additional features inside of gameplay, you do have have to turn on the game launcher. To do that, you want to pull down the notifications panel, click on the settings icon, and go down to where it says advanced features. Now inside of advanced features, you will see an option for games, and inside of games, this is where you just basically turn this on. Now if you want to learn a little bit more about what Game Launcher does, essentially it automatically arranges all of your games into one place and provides additional features that are useful for playing games. Once the Game Launcher is toggled on, it will probably first show up inside of your application tray. You'll find it, and then you'll be able to drag and drop it right over to your home screen. But because I already have one sitting there, I'm going to remove that one from home. Now inside of that Game Launcher, you will notice that this is where all of those applications that are games will be located and placed. Now you will notice that Pokemon Go, Toon Blast, and Stack Jump, if we're to go back over here, it will not show up anywhere inside of my application tray. That's one of the things that does help out and enhances your gameplay, is it places everything that's a gaming application into one location. Before we pop over into a game and check out the game tools, let's look a little bit of what the game launcher has to offer. So first off, you will see that all your applications of your games are in one spot. You also have two different toggles on the bottom. You have one that is for the game sound, either it's on or it's muted. And then you also have your game performance. What do you want your game to basically focus on? Do you want it to focus on the power saving? Do you want it to be balanced? Or do you want it to focus on the performance? So usually more than likely, you will have it on the very top option, which is focusing on performance. On the very top right hand side, this is where you can either add in a game if there was one that was missing, or if you took it off and you wanted to add it back in. You can also sort your games if you want it to be previously installed or if you want it to be alphabetical order. You also have announcements, which is just information that is coming from Samsung, usually about updates surrounding the application. Inside of settings, you do have a few different toggles you could turn on or off. The first one is talking about hiding the games on home and your application tray. So as I mentioned from before, all of your game icons will be shown inside of the game launcher. But if you do still want them to show up on your home screen or your application tray, just toggle this one off. This is another way that you'd be able to save mobile data is the second option here. So then it will play the videos only when connected to Wi-Fi. And then you can also turn on or off the app notifications for Game Launcher, or you can turn on or off the marketing information that is pertaining only to Game Launcher. On the very top, if you were to hover over that person, it'll say My Games. And when inside of My Games, it's gonna show you what type of games you have. Are they puzzle, arcade, racing, so on and so forth. How many games you have downloaded on your phone. You can also see how many minutes or hours you've played all of these games. You can check them out for the last week, the last 30 days, or all. And then also too, you can check out any videos that you have recorded. They will all be stored inside of here as well. And then if you want a little bit more detailed information about each game, if you touch on the title, it'll show you how much you've played, what is the data usage, what is the size of the game, when did you install it, and when was it last played. And then the last thing to show off inside the game launcher is the ability of discovering more games. Now, just like the Play Store, there's different categories, different ways of finding new games. This one also has pretty much the same setup. Now, if you go through here, you're gonna check out that there's different categories. This one's the most immersive. Um, you also just um, went by the hot games. You also have my game stats, and you can also check out some of the largest player based games. Now that we're finished with the game launcher, let's head over inside of a game and play with the game tools. Now, if you head over into a game and if it puts you over inside of the horizontal mode, all of your game tools and your buttons will be on the right hand side, the back, home, and recents. But you'll also notice two other icons, this touch icon as well as the game tools icon. Now inside of the game tools, this is where you can make this thing a full screen. You can also do no alerts during the game. You can block certain things during the game, more additional features. You have some settings, you can go back to your game tools, and then you have other options on the very bottom and everything else. But we will go over everything in just one second. I also want to show you what it looks like if you go inside of a game game that is going to be inside of normal portrait mode. So let's say that we go inside of the game tools, let's go to word search, and then this is what it will look like if you're inside of a game. Your game tools will be on the bottom, not the right hand side. Now one of the things I do have to point out is how much black area is actually still on the screen. Now there's quite a bit of space on the top and the bottom, or I should say the left and the right of this phone, that will be able to give you more gameplay, but right now it's basically turned off. If you open up your game tools, you'll see the option right up here on the very top, and when you hit on full screen, 
screen, you do have to restart the game, but you'll notice that it'll be pretty much edge to edge. So from before, if you remember, it was almost the width of my fingernails on each side. And now you can see it is fully covered up and you're taking advantage of that full 6.4 inch screen for the Galaxy Note 9. Now let's head back over inside of the game tools. And once you click on the game tool, you have a couple different options on the very top. You have the option right here to take you back over to the game launcher. So in this way you can pick a different game to play or you can go to the settings of game tools. Now for the shortcuts from what I said from before, you have your recents, the home and the back. There's your game tools that's on the very bottom over here, or you'd be able to change whatever this icon is over here. So this is the only shortcut you're able to change. Do you want it to be the screen touch lock, which this is definitely something that comes in handy, or you'd be able to do a navigation key lock. So you're not able to use any of those navigation keys on the bottom. You can also take a fast screenshot record, or you can have nothing. So if you are somebody who records a lot of gameplay, you'd be able to use that record button. But for me, I like to do the screen touch lock. So then this way, if I need to put my phone down, but I'm still in the middle of a game, it's not going to interfere or nobody will be able to interfere with it. You can also change the screenshot shot resolution, and then you're able to change the settings of when you're recording videos during your gameplay. So within the gameplay, you can either have a couple different options. Either you can have your image shown the whole time, you can either use your camera so you can be able to watch your face as you're doing your gameplay and your reactions, or you can have absolutely nothing. So for this one on the very top, just an example, I have select image. You can either make your image or your camera larger, no matter which one you're using. And then inside of here, inside of the picture, you're able to either select an image, take a picture, or you can use default. Now again, if you use your camera, it just kind of depends on how large you want your face to be there for all your different reactions. And then where do you want your audio source to come from? Microphone or the game? Now for me, I kind of like the game audio just because if I use my microphone, it'll kind of pick up the background music, but it'll also pick up my sound. It'll pick up really everything. So for me, I really rather just have the game um, audio going through. Then you'd be able to choose your video quality. What do you want your resolution to be? More than likely, you should just put it at that 10 80 and then you can have your bit rate and just basically put it as auto just to make it super simple and easy and then your aspect ratio do you want it to be the 16 by 9 or the full screen the last two you're more than likely not going to use but if you do have to contact samsung you are able to and then you can also check out the latest version if you are using the latest version of game tools now heading back inside of the game and clicking on the game tools we've already checked out everything on the top we've also toggled with the full screen and now this one here this is where you're able to have the no alerts during the game so just to let you know if somebody does send you a text message you will not get any type of a pop-up with this toggle on, but it will show up inside of your little notifications panel on the very top. Now, if you click on the no alerts during the game, this is what it'll show if somebody calls you. Would you like it to be a little floating icon, which will stay there unless if you answer it, you can put on speakerphone or you can decline it or you'd be able to have it show only in the notifications only on the very top. Now, if you do want to see a full tutorial of this portion right here, I made a dedicated video talking about this feature of the no alerts during the game because this is something that's brand new with the Galaxy Note 9 and I wanted to cover it fully. So I sent myself a text message with this thing on. I've also sent myself a text message with it off. I've called myself both ways as well. So you can see exactly what happens when someone does call or text you. Next up will be everything you're able to block during your gameplay. You have three different things you're able the block, the home button, your edge panel, and the auto brightness. Now for the home button, if you're somebody who has a bit smaller hands, maybe your son or daughter is playing a game, if they touch on that home button, or if even you purposely press and hold on the home button, this will be able to basically lock it. So by hard pressing the home button, it won't take you back to the home screen. Then also what you're able to turn off, which I always turn off, is going to be the edge panel. You never know what game you're going to be playing. You might accidentally pull out the edge panel as you're just trying to swipe on the lower edge of your screen. And then there you popped up edge panel. This is where you're able to block that. And then also your auto brightness. Sometimes you'll walk into a different room um, or you walk outside, you walk inside, and the brightness will change as you're playing a game. But if you like your brightness to be all the way up, you might as well turn this one right here, which will block the auto brightness. The fourth one listed is the edge additional features inside of additional features, what would you like to pop up? Now, again, this one right here is also brand new, which is going to be the pop-up panel. So if you turn this off, you will not have that panel, but it's a way to go inside of your quick four different applications if you're inside of gameplay. You also have the ability of turning on or off the floating keyboard. So if you don't want your keyboard taking up the full bottom half um, of your screen, no matter how you are looking at it, then you can actually have it float. And then you can also have the auto screen lock. Now, for 
for the pop-up panel, if you'd like to change which of these four different icons is shown or four different applications you're able to use during the gameplay, you are able to choose any of these applications. Mine I have set up for YouTube, uh, also the phone, messages, and Allo. Now, if there's any of these other ones you would like to turn on, you are able to. Really, any application is able to, and it's basically in the pop-up view portion. To show an example of the pop-up panel, let's say that you want to send somebody a text message. So anytime inside of your gameplay, open up the very bottom, click on your game tools, and this is where that pop-up panel shows up. Now, if you don't want to send somebody a text message because it's going to completely get you out of the game or it completely overlays on top of everything um, or it pauses the game or something like that, once you go to your panel, you click on your messages, and then inside of here, this is where you're able to choose who you want to talk to and your conversation, and then this is where you're able to send somebody a text message. Now, if you did turn on the ability of the floating keyboard, it will not take up this full entire thing. Now, I'm going to just go right over here. I'm going to hit on high, and then now you're able to send them a text message, and this is basically a pop-up view of the screen. Now, if you wanted to, you can hit on the X, and now you're right back over inside your game. Now, the four shortcut navigation keys on the bottom of the game tools is going to be the navigation key lock. If you wanted to lock everything on the very bottom, you have to touch on that unlock key on the top. You can go back inside your game tools. This is where you have your screen touch lock, and then you also have screenshot. So if you did a really high score, you're able to take a screenshot, and then you'd also be able to record. Now, once you hit on record, you want to hit on OK. And then now right here, you can see where my icon is. So again, I chose a picture. I did not choose my front facing camera. And then if you go inside of a game, you're able to record all of this. Let's say that we go inside of here hit on next, um, which actually this is a really fun game to download if you have yourself a controller. And so this is where you're able to just pretty much go. So I'm just going to play this just for a couple seconds here. Um, and then when you are finished, what you're able to do is pull down the notifications panel and then you're going to click on the tap to stop recording. Now, once you do that, you will actually see this recorded gameplay inside of your game tools or your game launcher. Now to show you the two different locations where all these videos will be stored is it will be inside your gallery, inside of the title of the game. And then once you go inside of here, you're able to check it all out. Now, when you hit on the play button, um, because I did record this in horizontal, you do want to put it that way as well. And the quality is actually amazing. It looks exactly as if I was just playing the game so you're not really use, losing any quality there. The second location where your game is stored is inside of the game launcher. Then you'll be able to click on your person icon and then click on the videos recorded. Now these will be placed in categories of the game title. So if I have four or five different game titles I can see how many videos I have for each game. So if I did four games of or four videos of Horizon Chase and I did three of Pokemon Go and then 18 of Fortnite you'll be able to see those numbers. When you click on the game title, you'll see all the videos that was recorded with that game. You can see when it was recorded and you'd be able to have the playback and then all your different editing tools and sharing tools. So I hope that you guys have liked this video. If you guys did, please give this thing a huge thumbs up. Also, don't forget to hit on subscribe right over here. You can hit on this little red circle on the very bottom left hand side. That'll get you subscribed as well. Make sure you share this video with your friends and family and social media sites. And outside of that, I'll see you guys later.